Let me run you through a scenario. A young girl is reported missing by her boyfriend, and despite all efforts, she's not found. Two years later, as a last ditch attempt to find her daughter, her mum submits some swabs to the FBI, and they're a hit. Some hikers had been walking along and seen a decomposing body, and the mitochondrial DNA had been a match. Now what if I told you this isn't a scenario? It's true. Every cell has DNA in it, but only two copies of DNA exist per cell, nuclear. Mitochondrial DNA, on the other hand, can have up to 3,000 copies. So for our decomposing body over there, two copies might be destroyed, but 3,000 is a number we can work with. Now, right now in New Zealand casework, mitochondrial DNA isn't used at all. It's simply too expensive and the process is a lot of admin. Overseas, they use something called second generation sequencing. The way I like to describe it is copy and paste the DNA and paste and paste over and over again until you have thousands of reads that you can stack and analyze. I'm looking at one step up from this, third generation sequencing. The device you see behind me is about this big and is the first portable real-time sequencer for DNA, nanopore sequencing. And it's shown some success in some pretty remote locations, all the way from the International Space Station to the Kabobo Rainforest in Africa. The way it works is it takes strands of DNA and feeds it through tiny nanoscopic pores. As the rope of DNA is fed through the hole, a signal is sent to the computer. That's your base call. Put enough of those together and you have your full DNA code. Once it's done, it spits out the fragment and grabs another one. So we know it works, but what I want to know is does it work for those degraded forensic type samples like in our missing persons case? So I'm taking a stepwise approach from really high quality samples with long fragments to chopping them up into small pieces and analyzing them, and then finally looking at those degraded forensic type samples. My benchmark for whether it works, the trusty old second gen sequencing I was talking about earlier. If it's matching and accuracy and concordance, there's potential for this to be implemented into case work into the future. And I believe it's worth it for one mother's closure on her missing daughter. Thank you.